the Archdiocese of Toronto, and the National Catholic Broadcasting Council. Through the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, presents Sunday TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Sunday TV Mass on this 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time. My name is Deacon Mike Walsh. Our celebrant today and our homilist is Monsignor Robert Nuska. The televising of our Mass today is made possible through a kind donation from you, the Daily TV Mass community across Canada, and those of you who join us each day on YouTube from around the world. We thank you for your ongoing gifts and your prayers that make the Daily TV Mass possible. Our Mass today is being offered for the intentions of those who share the gift of their time with our community by being part of the Daily TV Mass congregation. Over the past few weeks, we have asked them to write their intentions in our prayer intentions book, and today we ask all in our TV and internet community to hold these intentions in your prayers. The members of the Daily TV Mass congregation who join us at Loretta Abbey have made attending and responding to the prayers of the Mass a ministry. They represent the tens of thousands who watch every day. We are extremely grateful for the gift of their time and their willingness to share their faith with so many. If you live in or are visiting the greater Toronto area, we invite you to attend the taping of the Daily TV Mass and join our congregation. This Sunday is also the 105th World Day of Migrants and Refugees. The theme announced by His Holiness Pope Francis for this celebration is it's not just about migrants. We ask that you keep refugees and migrants and those who care for them in your prayers today. God bless. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, alas, for those who are at ease in Zion and for those who feel secure on Mount Samaria. Alas, for those who lie on beds of ivory and lounge on their couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp, and like David, 
improvise in, on instruments of music, who drink wine from the bowls and anoint themselves with finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first to go into exile and the revelry of those who lie in peace shall pass away. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. As for you, man of God, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no human being has ever seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. The word of the Lord.
Jesus Christ was rich, yet he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told this parable to those among the Pharisees who loved money. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously each day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to be satis satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and he saw Abraham far away with Lazarus at his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am an agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in a like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all of this, between us is a great chasm that has been fixed so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. The man who had been rich said, Then, Father, I beg you, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes from the dead, they will repent. Abraham said to him, If they do not listen to, the, to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. today's gospel, our Lord continues to teach in parables as he addresses himself directly to those among the Pharisees who loved money. This parable or teaching story it relates the situation of a rich man and a poor man named Lazarus, which derives from the Hebrew name Eleazar, literally, he whom God helps. And as we've heard, the rich man enjoys a rather opulent lifestyle, wearing the kind of clothes that would have been worn by royalty. Lazarus at the same time, has a miserable existence outside the gates of the rich man's house. We should note that for the record, the rich man never orders Lazarus removed from the gate. He doesn't speak to him in a way that's harsh or cruel. Neither does he object to the fact that Lazarus receives the scraps that fall from his table, scraps which, for the record, would normally have been eaten by the dogs. The rich man never went out of his way to treat Lazarus badly. He knew he was there, but completely ignored him. So Jesus goes on to describe the dramatic reversal of fortunes of the rich man and Lazarus in, in the world to come. And we see that in the afterlife, the rich man suffers greatly while Lazarus enjoys a state of blessedness. Here we're led to reflect on the larger theme of the great reversal that characterizes the arrival of the kingdom of God. It is a theme that recurs in our Lord's preaching. There's a kind of logic of reversal, if you will, the first will be last, the least will be greatest, the greatest will be least, and so forth. Those who would save their lives must lose it, and so forth. We see then in today's parable, our Lord inviting us then not only to reconsider the importance we attach to material possessions in this world, but to reevaluate our thinking about the poor. All of our gifts, our health, our natural abilities, our wealth, our material possessions, life itself, 
All of these are gifts from God, but ultimately represent a concrete opportunity to do something for other people. God will clearly call us to give account of what we have done concerning the material possessions we have and the gifts that we have. What have we done to alleviate the sufferings of the poor at our own gate? This Sunday, the Church celebrates the 105th World Day of Migrants and Refugees. The theme of this year is, it is not just about migrants. In his message for today, Pope Francis warns against the globalization of indifference as migrants, refugees, displaced persons, and victims of trafficking have become emblems of exclusion in our world. He goes on to remind us of the importance of looking after those who are in need, the elderly, those who lack support, of course, refugees, and all, those who have names, faces, stories, and need to, be treat, need to be treated as such. So as we continue to celebrate this Mass, we pray for the grace to see in the poor, the marginalized, the suffering, an image of Christ himself broken in our midst. We pray for the grace of a new creativity of charity to be able to address credibly and effectively the needs of those who are standing at our gate like Lazarus in today's Gospel. so that we may know always the peace that is Jesus Christ, let us now pray to our Father in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Brothers and sisters, let us now present our prayers and petitions to God in heaven. We pray for all who remain displaced, those who are driven from their homeland because of war, persecution, and injustice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear me. For all migrants and refugees that in the hospitality of Christians, they may experience God's own mercy and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Let us pray as a community for the intentions of the daily TV Mass congregation, which are listed in our prayer intentions book, and for all the requests of our daily TV Mass community, that they may come to feel the peace of Christ in their hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers we've made and those that remain deep within our hearts, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Receive us to be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of the Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer 
to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with the angels, the archangels, and all the saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Michael and all the archangels and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. If you're interested in making monthly donations using the pre-authorized checking method, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details.